Welcome back YouTube, it's VLD, and sometimes cheap isn't good, but other times cheap is good, and this product is actually really good for the price right now. Welcome back YouTube, it's VLD, and this is week four of Friday keyboard reviews for February, and this week is not a mini six keyboard review, so this one is from in a tech themselves, it was a keyboard I bought for about 25 bucks because I wanted to look for the cheapest keyboard off Amazon. And this is, they have different sizes for the Pro 11, 12, or the entry level iPad themselves. You can actually pick this up off Amazon for about 25, 30 bucks. I bought this without really expecting a whole lot and actually buying it and actually using it for a few weeks. I am really a fan of this product. Like it's cheap. It has a lot of features to it. Granted, it's not the Apple Magic Keyboard, either version of them, but for you bang for your buck for this product, I really like this device. Inside of it is a basic instruction booklet, you know, your usual stuff, you know how it goes, your short book, uh, shortcuts, cutouts, all that stuff, plug it, file it to the size. Granted, it's micro USB. It's a, it's a trade-off basically for only $25. You can actually pull the case apart. I actually didn't really know that was a thing with this keyboard. Like you have the hinge on the back, it's metal and plastic. It's really sturdy. The actual case itself for the keyboard is pretty flimsy. So there's that, it uses micro USB. There are trade-offs, especially for the price, but I'm actually a fan of this product really. For your Apple Pencil, I have a knockoff that does actually fit, but if you have a sleeve for your Apple Pencil too, it does not work. And just with this being fairly inexpensive, it doesn't quite fit all the way. I've got the newer 5th gen 12.9 inch Pro M1, so it doesn't really fit all the way, but it does fit, so it will, it will work with any generation. I do like the kickstand on the back. It's metal, rubber, and plastic, and it's actually pretty sturdy. It holds up fairly well. You can do any angle or, or any orientation. And the keys are, the keyboard itself is Bluetooth, so therefore there's no actual smart connector. So just connect it via Bluetooth. It's pretty easy and pretty simple. You get about 30, 40 days of battery life with the, with the backlight off. With it on, you get about eight or nine hours. It charges via micro USB. But one good feature I like about this that sets it apart from all the other ones are the actual backlit. So if you have, if you ever had like an Asus gaming laptop, ROG or any of the other ones, MSI, you have the ability to change the colors for any of them. And that's really nice. You have different keyboard cutouts for your F keys. To home screen, brightness up and down, cut, copy, paste, spotlight search for that, music, pause, play, fast forward, and rewind for the next set. But I like had the option of actually being able to cut, copy, and paste for an actual shortcut. So I always thought that was actually kind of nifty that they actually included that for the shortcuts because with the Apple one, you can actually do that. And you can also lock it, brightness up and down. It has raised awake, so if you just crack the screen, it will, you know, wake up and go to sleep. If you put the case on or take it off. So that's actually nice. You have the actual hinge on the back that's actually pretty sturdy. So if you have Microsoft tablet, it reminds you of kind of like that, like the Surface tablets. It's actually fairly sturdy, it's not bad. The material itself is hard plastic. It took me an actual while to actually take the back off. I didn't really realize at first that you can actually detach the keyboard from the case itself. The case itself is hard plastic. It's really flimsy, it's kind of cheap. They had to cut corners somewhere to keep the price on, really inexpensive, so I can see how they actually did that. And then with the actual back to remove the keyboard from the actual base, you kind of just like twist it and then pull it apart. It took me about five minutes to actually realize how to do that, but after you learn how to do it, it's actually not bad. With the keyboard case actually being Bluetooth, you can actually use it while it's separated. There's no smart connector, so therefore, 
You could put the, put the keyboard in another room, type in it, and you would still actually have the same stuff. And to put it back in, you just kind of like snap it back in place on its back, and then you kind of pull it so it snaps in with the rubber on the back, so it kind of like goes in. That's the only best way I can describe it. And then you just put the kick sand down, and then with this keyboard, you have different angles you can adjust it to because there's magnets on the base of it. Like, the keys aren't really super mushy. They're a little bit tough compared to some of the other ones I reviewed. Like, it's actually not bad of a typing experience, in my opinion. Like, you're given a full-size keyboard with cutouts. Like, the keys are... They're not really mushy. They're a little firm. They're flat. They're not the scissor switch that Apple uses. But they're not terrible. You can tell that they're cheap, but they're not bad. And another good thing I do actually like about this, you can actually angle the keyboard because there's magnets in the base of it. On the top, you can adjust and go up and down. Like, I'm actually really impressed by this keyboard, especially for the price of being $25. I mean, compared to the Apple Magic Keyboard, you're paying two to 300 bucks for that. You're given USB Type-C for charging if you have the iPad built inside of it off to the side. Uh, the Inatech one is only micro USB, which could be a trade off. Apple one does the smart connector, which it has a trackpad, but the other one doesn't. But I mean, you're also paying, you know, 25, 30 bucks compared to, you know, $300. So price difference, performance won't always be the same. And then when you actually close it, it's a little bit thicker than the Apple one. But there are caveats with this one, as in you can actually adjust it any angle basically. With the Apple one, you're limited it to about 45 degree angle. The keys are backlit. You have full RGB, so if you're a hardcore gamer and you want to RGB light everything in your life, this would be a good benefit for it. Like this keyboard is actually not bad from a scale from one to 10. I would get this about six and a half, seven. Like the type of experience is decent. It's not bad. My only gripe about this is with the case, because I have the newer M1, the power button actually doesn't cut out for it. And then pulling out the case itself from it, it's flimsy. So it takes a minute to actually pull it out compared to the Apple one. You can just basically just pull it right out, snap it in, and it's easy as, you know, apple pie basically. So, but with the Apple one backlit, it's more boring. It's not as fun as the other one. I mean, you have a full-size keyboard with RGB lighting. I mean, for your iPad, how cool is that? I do say that's actually a good thing. I actually do like that. Yeah. Beforehand, also with the Apple one, when you close it, it's pretty thin. It's boring. I mean, the Apple keyboard is fantastic. It's phenomenal. It's Apple, so everything they do is magic. But they tend to be boring. And with the internet for being only 25 bucks. It's very inexpensive, and the rubber mat on the back, you're offering more protection with this one compared to the Apple one. And it's just a simple fact, like, it's so damn cheap. Like, I got this for about 30 bucks. I mean, as shown right now, like, it's kind of a gripe to put it in. I think I might have gotten the wrong keyboard for it because it takes a few minutes to pop in the case. But given a full-size keyboard, the RGB lighting, the price is so inexpensive... It's a really good, well-rounded keyboard, especially for the price. I'm actually surprised I got this for 25 bucks. Like, it's been a few weeks, it's still blowing my mind. Like, you get a lot of bang for your buck, a lot of features to it. I mean, granted, the Apple one will always be, well, kind of better. It's better in every aspect, but it's also boring. This one, it's cool, it's neat, it's cheap. You can pull it apart. You can light up the night skylight, and I really like this. It's a really good experience for that cheap. I use it now to replace my Apple one. I'm your host, VLD. Smash that bell and subscribe.